Hi buddy, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 5.3. This is part one of seven, so this will be a 45 minute podcast. <laughs> Just joking. <laughs> I hope you all went out and impersonated your parents and voted today, um, but I have a feeling you're too goody goody to do it. So today we're going to learn about the polarity of molecules, the difference between polar bonds and polar molecules, the difference between intermolecular forces, which is between molecules, and covalent ionic bonds, location, strength, and type of attraction. We're going to do some definitions, dipole moment, uh, momentary dipole, induced dipole, in connection with, yeah, yeah, you can read those things. Describe and distinguish between three types of intermolecular forces, dispersion, dipole, dipole, and hydrogen bonds. And given a substance, determine what types of intermolecular forces exist between its molecules based upon formula, molecular shape, polarity, boiling point, and or evaporation. So let's have to do that. A bond is polar if... The change in electronegativity difference is 0.5 or more. Okay. So remember, that's the periodic table of electronegativity. Huh? A molecule is polar if the bond is polar. Hey, that's up there. And the shape does not cancel the polarity. So let's take a look at the shapes to show you how that works. CO2, carbon dioxide, if you draw its Lewis dot structure, looks like this. So you need to get out your periodic table of electronegativity values to see that oxygen is 3.5 and hydrogen is 2.4. So that means that oxygen is more negative. So I would draw a little arrow doing this. Do you see how the left side is negative and the right side is negative and the center is positive and the center is positive? It's pretty obvious the center of positivity is here, but the negative sides cancel. So CO2 is symmetrical, so it has polar bonds, but non-polar molecule. because the negative sides cancel. The center of negativity on the left, on the right, or in the middle. It's in the middle, so that cancels. There's no negative end. NH3 looks like this. I'm gonna change my color, maybe that'll be better. Ink color, hopefully red. Why don't I have red? So if this is N, this is H, H, H. These are polar bonds. So H is the positive end, and nitrogen is the delta negative end. Delta positive, delta negative, delta positive, delta negative. So the center of delta negative is clearly right there. Center of delta positive is the average of these three. Can you see that these three in the bottom of a pyramid would be like right here, tickling the belly? So this is the center of negativity. So this, I'm sorry, positivity. So this is the negative pole. This is the positive pole. So this is a polar molecule. CH4. C is 2.5. H is 2.1. So the electronegativity difference is 0.4. So nonpolar bonds means nonpolar molecule. This is a polar molecule. So notice this has a pair. That's a polar shape. No pairs on the central atom. Nonpolar. Let's see if we see a trend here. PF5. Here's P. F. What made me think of PF chain? That sounds so good. Mm. Okay. This is a polar bond. I forget what it is. But the difference between F and P is greater than 0.5. So fluorine is more negative. So I'm going to draw my arrows this time. Do, 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 do. I'm pointing at the negative one. So clearly the center of positivity is right here and the central atom. Negativity, do you see how this negative guy would cancel with this negative guy? Okay, These two would average out to be right here, right? And this guy right here would cancel with this one. So my center of negativity is right here. My center of positivity is right here. So there's no poles, right? No negative end. So yeah, no poles, so no polar, not polar. Because there's not a negative end nor a positive end, they're both in the middle. Okay? So again, notice no pairs, non polar. Hey, I'm starting to see a trend. SF4, this is SF4. S, F, 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 F. And draw my little arrows. Fluorine is more negative than sulfur. The difference is greater than 0.5. So we look right here. All of my white guys are negative. And this fluorine would cancel with this one because they're on the opposite sides. These two 
the average of this negative would be right here, again, in the middle right there, tickling the belly. Positive pole, central atom, negative pole, tickling the be belly, that is a polar bond. Ooh, I almost called it polyra. So, notice it has a pair, it is polar. That's usually true. H2O, oh, figures, I'm going to draw it, do, 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 H, H, it is a polar bond. So H's are positive, oxygen's negative, my center of negativity is clearly right here. Center of positivity is right in between these two. So negative pole, positive pole, polar molecule. Oh, and look, it has a pair, too. Two pairs. BRF5. I don't know if it's this one. It is BRF5. Again, it's a polar bond, so you check the electronegativity differences. And draw your arrows pointing at the more negative one. F has a value of 4.0. BR has a value of something less than 3.6. Center of positivity is right here in the middle. Negativity. Let's see what can I cancel. Do you see how this guy would cancel with this guy? And this guy would cancel with this guy. So what I'm left with is the negative sign right here. This is the negative pole. This is the positive pole. It's polar. Right, it has a pair, it's polar. Okay, so there's BRF on. Chuckle three. C H H H and then C L. It doesn't really matter which one you call chlorine, but it's there. C to H is nonpolar. So C to H is nonpolar. See it's helpful to know that. Didn't even have to check my sheet. C to H is nonpolar, so I'm not gonna do anything with that. C to C L is polar. So chlorine is more negative than carbon, and nothing cancels it. So although this has no pairs, it is polar, because this is the negative end, and this is the positive end. Remember, pole means end. ALF3, aluminum in the middle. F, F, F. Al to F is a polar bond, so I got negative, negative, negative. Again, you draw the arrow towards the negative end, put this positive sign towards the positive end. And the negative end has the biggest electronegativity value. And the positive end has the smallest. So notice how these two would balance out to be right here. And this one would cancel with that one. So again, positive and negative are in the same place, so it's nonpolar. And notice it had no pairs. Intermolecular forces are between molecules. The prefix inter means between. I drive on the interstate. That is a road between Indiana, the great state of Indiana, and leftover Illinois. Okay, that's between states. They are weaker by a factor of 10 or so. So they're weaker than compared to intra. Intra molecular forces. Intra means within. It takes 10 times the energy to boil water as it does, I wrote that, it takes 10 times less energy to boil water than to break the OH bond. So water, you know, looks like this. And water is attracted to other water molecules. There's little attractions there. And it's a lot easier to break that than break the bond in the middle. Dispersion forces. All atoms have electrons. By chance, they are unbalanced and create an induced dipole attraction, which is electrostatic attraction. So, for example, if I have an atom right here and it has 10 electrons, there is quite possible that I could have six on one side and four on the other just by them going all over the place. So this side would be a little bit negative. This side would be a little bit positive. So if that happens over here, notice how if I had two electrons, I'd have two over here. And this side would be delta positive, a little bit positive. And the one next to it, if this is positive, these electrons go, ooh, that's positive. Let me check that out. And they create a little bit of a negative charge and create a positive charge over here. And the atom over here it goes, ooh, the electrons, ooh, that's a little bit positive. Let me go check that out. So an instantaneous dipole, that's by chance they're going crazy, induces an instantaneous dipole in the neighboring atoms. Dipole, dipole. 
permanent positive and negative attract electrostatic attraction. This is from polar molecules. So these things have a, a permanent dipole. Notice the wonderful arrow. And the positive end is attracted to the negative end. And the negative end is attracted to the positive end. And this would be a solid. Look how neat and orderly it is. And this would be a liquid. Not quite so neat and orderly, but the attractions are still there. And that has effects. Hydrogen bonds. When H bonds directly to F, O, or N. So H to F, O, or N. So these guys are very electronegative. The bonding atoms acquire relatively large partial charges, giving rise to strong dipole-dipole attractions between neighboring atoms. So hydrogen bond is just a dipole-dipole attraction, but it's a really strong dipole-dipole attraction. And what makes it really strong? It's H, which is pretty positive, and these guys, which are pretty negative, so you get a pretty intense positive-negative attraction here. So it's basically a dipole-dipole bond on steroids. Don't take steroids, kids. Don't do drugs, kids. Just vote six times. What type of intermolecular forces are in the following? This is hydrogen, okay? H to H. This is not hydrogen bonded. This is not polar, so it is simply um, dispersion forces. So the way you tell is N to H, right? N directly bonded to H, that's H bonding. Ooh, H to O, is that hydrogen bonding? No, because it's not directly bonded to it. That's C to H. That's a nonpolar bond, but C to O is a polar bond. So because it's a polar bond, this would be dipole, dipole. And that's H two C. This one right here. So if I look at this, this molecule is nonpolar. So if it's a nonpolar molecule, it means it has dispersion forces only. This guy has nonpolar bonds. Oops, nonpolar bonds equals dispersion only. Ionic covalent metallic bonds are not intermolecular. They are intramolecular, and they are much, much, much stronger. So to give you an idea of this, like the intramolecular would be bonding to itself and breaking through there. Um, if we are on a cliff, and in the movie someone is always falling off a cliff. I'm falling. Okay. And someone's head's there, it's like, grab my hand. Okay? And they're grabbing hands. And it's like, I'll never let you go. Don't let me go. You can't hold on. Now, one of two things can happen. Now, in a good movie, they always fall down. Okay? So, thing number one could be that they their hands lose their grip and they die. Okay? It happens mostly to bad guys when something like this happens. The bad guys lose their hand. Oh, they fall. And he smiles, okay? And it separates by their hand. Now, what I always wanted to see, but never happens, is where the guy loses his arm. But it never happens. So the guy says, oh, my arm! And this is his hand. And this is his hand. But he loses his arm. That never happens because intra-molecular forces, like intra-body forces, are stronger. So the forces that hold your hand, your arm, your shoulder, and your arm is much stronger than the grip you have on somebody else. Okay? So between molecules is very breakable. Within yourself, if I said, all right, I'll give you a dollar if you can rip off your lab partner's arm, you couldn't do it. You really, no matter how hard you tried, no matter how bad you wanted that dollar, you're not going to be able to rip that off because intra forces are much stronger. Uh-oh, I forgot my review part. Now I've got to... I've got to hop out of here. Uh, I guess I'll discard those. All right. So what I need to do is insert another slide. I know you wanted more. Uh, slide, no. Uh, no let's get the one. Hmm. Come on, you can give me another slide. But it's not giving me another slide. So I guess I'll just write it on there. So you need to be able to identify these things by characteristics. So the lowest boiling point is dispersion forces. Medium boiling point is 
um, dipole dipole and highest boiling point is H bonding. Then you got to learn a little something about viscosity. Viscosity is resistance to flow. So for example, syrup has a high viscosity And then something that pours very, very quickly has a low viscosity. So gasoline. So if I were to rank these things by their properties here, dispersion forces would have high viscosity because they're not very attracted to each other. So they flow easily. And dipole-dipole would have medium viscosity And H bonding would have Mac Daddy viscosity, like the ketchup that won't come out of the bottle. Mac Daddy. Some of you writing down Mac Daddy viscosity. That is just sad. Okay, and now I'll get to my review slide. Doop, doop, doop. Both polar molecules need both polar bonds and shapes that do not cancel. No pairs often means nonpolar. Class is 20 minutes of happiness, and hopefully this podcast wasn't that long.